Hi, it's Jeff Constable from the Catalan Learning Portal and today I'm with Madeleine Carr who works in the International Politics Department at Aberystwyth University. Um, hi Madeleine. Hi Jeff. Um, do you want to tell us a bit about what your what area you work in, what your specialism is? Please? Sure, yeah I work in uh, the international politics of the internet so we look at things like uh, cyber security, internet freedom, um, internet governance, all of those questions, but from a political perspective instead of a, a strictly technological perspective. Right. And today I particularly wanted to speak to you, Madeleine, about your, your use of um, the virtual learning environment Blackboard here at Breswith. Um, well, do you want to tell us about how, how you got into it and how, how you use it? Sure. Um, yes, I use Blackboard a lot. I find the students really respond to um, having the materials available to them and, um, and to using that as a learning space. So I like to use it quite heavily. Um, I put all of their content, all of the content up on Blackboard and I, I arrange it week by week so that they can just click a link, it takes them to that week and then they have all their information for the seminars, they have all their readings, um, they have, I always post a uh, um, recording of my lecture, my PowerPoint slides, everything, so that if they miss a lecture or if they want to revise later on, they can get all that information from, from the Blackboard site. Right, and is that all up um, at the beginning of, of the course, so if a student is particularly enthusiastic, they can have a sneak peek at, at what's coming, kind of thing? Yeah, that's yeah. right, yes, yeah. it's all up there, except for the lecture recordings, because mm. I record them live. So, um, so they can see all the way down the, the course what their readings are. They can read ahead if they have time or if they... I, I always put extra readings up there for people who have a special interest in it or have more time or maybe are researching a, an essay on that topic. And it put up a lot of links to additional material that they might be interested in depending on what kind of thing they're studying. So I, I do use it a lot. So, so it's an essential part of your teaching. It's really. absolutely essential, really. yeah. It's an essential part of the student experience to go, go in there. And how do the students find it? Do you get feedback on it? Well, I, I always uh, run an online survey at the end of the term to ask the students a whole lot of questions about the module. But one of them I always ask is, um, you know, how important was it to you that all the information was available for you on Blackboard? And the answer is always 100% it was important to them. No one has ever said it wasn't very important. They all say it was very important to them, and it enhanced their learning and it made the, the module more, um, you know, more engaging for them. And and do they like um, the ability to review your lectures through the Penopto recordings as well? They do. They often comment on that. They like some people. In fact. You know, don't really um, get as much out of a lecture when they're sitting there live. Some people find it hard to concentrate, or the lectures at the end of the day, or they've, uh, you know, they have a particularly heavy day that day, and they f they find that they can be sitting in a live lecture and, you know, maybe drift off. It's hard to concentrate on something like that for an hour. But when they can watch it at home, they can pause it, they can take notes. They can watch it again if there was something they missed, if they got distracted halfway through. Um, or if they didn't understand it, there was something in there they, they didn't quite get, they can go back and watch it again, look at the slides again, and um, and obviously use it for revision. So I think they find it very helpful. Mm -hmm. And does, does uh, the virtual learning environment offer any uh, means for uh, discussion amongst the students? It regarding does. Your, your lectures and so yeah. on, and the course? Yes, it does. We uh, I always run... Uh, some online seminars. So we have uh, two lectures a week, two one-hour lectures, and we would normally have a one-hour uh, small group seminar as well. Um, and I alternate these. One week we have a face-to-face -face seminar, and the next week we have an online seminar. And what we do during the online seminars is we use the discussion board um, facility on Blackboard. And the students have to post a, um, a short summary, 500-word summary, of the readings. And in these posts, I, I particularly look for their critical analysis. So critical analysis is something that's absolutely essential to doing well at university, but it's very hard to teach and it's very hard to learn because it's a kind of abstract concept. And so what we do in these short 500 word posts is I ask them not just to describe what was in the readings, but to provide some analysis of that in a short written piece. 
then they each have to comment on for, on two to three other students' posts. And so this, this brings out a discussion between the students about how they saw the readings that week and how they interpreted the material. Sounds, sounds great. And um, what, what is your motivation then to, to do it partly um, you know, face to face and partly mm. online? Well, I don't like to get rid of the face-to-face -face altogether because I like the contact with the students and I think a lot of students really like that, being in a small group together with the lecturer, with a small group of students and talking these things through. Um, but the advantages of doing it online, well, there are multiple advantages. For one, people who are quiet or who don't like to speak up or for whom maybe English is not their first language get that time and space to think about what they would like to say about that material and to write it down and to maybe work on it a little bit before they post it. And they also get time to consider other people's points of view, you know, really think about them and respond to them. And I, li I think that that's good for students who don't, you know, you always have some students who are happy to speak up in class, but there's always some who really don't. Um, and I also like it because I get to hear from every single student in the week. I get a very good understanding of what their understanding is. So then at the, at the beginning of the next week, I can correct any kind of misapprehensions that I saw kind of running through the online seminars. Um, so I find it's good for my teaching. I think it's good for their learning. Um, but I don't like to get rid of face-to-face -face because we all really enjoy that as well. So I find the combination is good. So do you also, do you think that by um, having online uh, seminars and discussion, you're developing skills in the students that they're going to need, you know, when they go out to the workplace, into the sort of real world, as it were? Yeah. Those... Yeah, I do. I think the critical analysis is something that they really learn from the online seminars. I think the learning to debate, you know, you know, written format is really, really useful for them as well. Um, and I think um, one thing that a lot of students comment on is that the online seminars really make them do the readings. Mm -hmm. So they actually have to do the readings in order to post. Whereas it, when you go to a face-to-face -face seminar, maybe you haven't got through the readings and you can just kind of sit quietly and hope that you don't get called on. But you can't do that in the online mm -hmm. seminar. So I think what it does is it, it, it kind of gets them more engaged in the module than, you know, maybe they're getting busy and they're finding it hard to get through the readings, but they still really have to for these online seminars, so mm -hmm. I think, um, you know, it's good for their time management.